meeting up for the third series all time between these two. Last time was 2021. Murray State gave the Hogs a competitive series, but Arkansas won them. And then you go back to the very first one, which, Troy, you were a part of, 1986. Yeah, that, that's that's way back. Uh, thanks for pointing out my <laughs> age there, Josh, so people can do the math. But yeah, it was freshman year, and I definitely remember playing against Murray State. And I, I, I tell you what, they're always a team that is going to give you everything you want and then some. We just talked about the, the veteran team that they have. And I, I think the advantage of that, Josh, is just players that – the stage is not too big. They've been there. They've done that. They've played in, in big parks in front of big crowds. And I think they're, they're, his, this team is going to handle this situation this whole weekend very well. Well, Cade Vernon's handled it well so far. He went one, two, three in the first as he pitches to Ben McLaughlin here. That always kind of gets me on a, on a pitcher that threw the same baseball three times and threw three balls. And goes, ah, it's the ball's <laughs> fault. I'm going I'm to toss this one, see if that will help him out. That seemed to work. Get me over pitch for a strike. McLaughlin will take his free pass. Ten strikeouts, three walks in the first two starts of the year for Cade Vernon, which covered nine and two thirds. But feasting on free bases has become a staple for Arkansas throughout the years. Razorbacks have been amongst the nation's leaders each of the last three years in drawing walks. Hiva Loy, the first year shortstop. Josh, I feel like Aloy is about ready to explode. He took a really good batting practice, hit a lot of balls to the opposite field, tremendous power to all fields. Hitting just 182 to start the season, but I think everybody in that Razorback dugout knows that it's only a matter of time. How about that? Positioning to hold on McLaughlin at first, I think that is because McLaughlin's not a threat to steal, and it allows Howell, the first baseman, to kind of get in better fielding position. So it's almost kind of like a token hold on over there, and it gives him a better chance to try to turn the double play. I've never seen that technique. Have you? No, not certainly doesn't anything come to mind recently. Ground ball straight back through. Aloy says you can line up wherever you want to. Well, there you go. You called it. Coming to seeing eye single right there. He just kind of took that slider right back up the box. Great effort by Bland. You thought he might get there. and Almost like, like he dove over the top of that baseball. I don't think he's going to, even if he comes up with it, get McLaughlin at second base. And, Arkansas has got something brewing here in the second. Thing was blistered 99 on the exit below. First pitch strike to Hudson Polk, senior catcher, transfer from Oklahoma, returning Razorback. He gets the nod at the DH today after a first inning grand slam on Tuesday against Grambling. And really had a really good fall at the plate. Borderline pitch there, and the crowd knew it. It's a good take by Hudson Polk. Yeah, that's a nice job by Vernon. Kind of got that borderline pitch on the first first pitch and he just went right back to it on the second pitch. One, two, a little slow hopper. This could be trouble. Charging in, Garner just eats it. 
Kind of a swinging butt right there by Hudson Polk. I think that's a really good decision by Garner right there. There's a lot of bad things that can happen if he throws that ball down the right field line. Now in this situation, you're still in this, you still have the double play set up. You could always even come home to first if you want to. And you're probably going to avoid a really big inning right there. And that's what a veteran player does is you just don't try to do too much in, the, in a situation. Especially a guy that's not really used to playing a lot of third base. He can play anywhere. First pitch to Jones is sliced down into the right field corner. McLaughlin in, Aloy right behind him, and the Razorbacks take the lead here in the second. How about Jason Jones? The guy just hits rockets. How about 110 exit velocity off the bat? It's a fastball away, not a bad pitch. And that's the development of Jason Jones right there. That ability not to try to pull that ball. It's going to be a hard ground ball to short or third if he tries to pull it. He hits the ball where it's pitched, and then Arkansas plates a pair of RBI runs. First pitch here, Peyton Holt going right after it. Well, few are better in this situation than Peyton Holt. Last year, he was the team leader with runners on base. At 439, nobody else was even close to him. I mean, that's just a crazy stat. That's like one you have in a video game. Yeah. He hit 392 on the year. This, this, one. this is where Arkansas really struggled down in, in Arlington in the tournament is driving in runners in scoring position. I think the Oklahoma State, Oklahoma State game they lost, they were like one for 14. And that's just something that I know Nate Thompson really wants to work on. Chopped to short, they go to third to cut down the lead runner. Smart play by Drew Vogel, the shortstop. But it's a productive out for Peyton Holt driving in Hudson Polk to make it three to one. Well, you brag on Jason Jones for what a great job of taking the ball the other way, and he kind of made the cardinal sin as a base runner. If you're on second base and the ball's to your right, you freeze. If it's to your left, then you go. That was clearly to his right, and he ran right into an out. Now you just, there's Dave Van Horn talking about it, saying, hey, now we just lost a guy to scoring position. Base it does not score a run. Bottom of the lineup, Ty Wilmsmeyer. They gave him a little break on Tuesday, did not play in that game against Grambling. And Wilmsmeyer's reached safely in all seven he started this year. This will get out of play. It is going to have to be a really hard hit ball right at one of the infielders for Murray State for them to double up Wilmsmeyer. How about, how about this stat? When he's at full speed, he covers 31.6 feet per second. And just to put in perspective, I'll tell you about that in just a second. Elite Major League Baseball speed is 30 feet a second. So you're talking about probably one of the faster guys in Major League Baseball at the plate, Ty Wilmsmeyer. Taken off as this is hit well to center. Going back to the track, making the catch is Mercer. And Holt able to backtrack all the way. He had to touch second base, running back to first. He had taken a one-step turn. That's how deep that ball was hit. Not a lot of wind here today at Palm Walker, so if you're going to get it out, it's going to be all on the hitter. Hudson White popped out to right field first time up. He was ahead in the count, 3-0, and Vernon was able to battle back. Hey, talking about battling back, Josh, you know, you got to give it to Kate Vernon. This this inning could have got away from him 
in a big way. And I, I know Arkansas put a crooked number on the board when, when you have bases loaded, no outs, and you got a got a ground ball and then a fly ball. Build it on a short hop. That is a heck of a play right there. Logan Bland comes charging in, and Arkansas retired. Experience pitching on different and yet spotlighted stages preparing him for the next level. There's got to be something said about you know putting on the red, white, and blue. It's that's that's just got to be kind of a different level of of pride that you take when you get to don that uniform. Moving into the third inning here, three-one Razorbacks. Eight-nine-one to bat. Ethan Kreisen turns on the first pitch. Barely having to move out in left field. Jason Jones with the grab. One pitch and one out for Hagen Smith, but that does break up the stretch of strikeouts. He struck out the side in the second. But it looked like Kreisen really got that one uh, off the bat. It jumped, and he just caught it down just a little bit toward the end of the bat. But tell you what, baseball is a game of inches. Uh, he hits that about an inch more on the barrel. That thing could be laying in the hog pen. Here's Logan Bland, who made that good-looking defensive play to end the bottom of the second. He made a really hard play look easy. That was, that was a dandy play right there. Now they haven't faced a ton of left-handed pitching this year, but Logan Bland, who's a true switch hitter, Coach Skirka was telling us this, this might be an opportunity for him this weekend to really shine because he's been looking forward to the chance of hitting from the right side, although careful what you wish for <laughs> going against <laughs> yeah. a guy like Hagen Smith. Yeah, that's, that's right. Hagen really has an unusual delivery. You know, he, uh, he finishes very tall in his delivery. Just kind of pivots on that land leg See a lot of pitchers maybe really drive down and get that chest kind of over that front knee to keep that ball in the zone. Very upright delivery. Trying to work the outside corner there. It's a full count. Bland works the walk. They like him in that spot. He's kind of a bottom of the order leadoff type of guy and doing leadoff things there, getting the free pass. If Hagen Smith's going to miss a pitch or miss, miss a location, it is usually arm side, so that pitch will run up and away from a right hand batter, up and into lefties. Bland, the first player to reach since this guy, Drew Vogel, homer to start the game. Took an 0-1 pitch deep to right field. His second homer of the year. One of the two team captains for Vogel, who's on some draft boards, coming off an all-Missouri Valley Conference season in 2023, which was impressive because Coach Skirka was telling us he was hurt early on last year. They thought last year was kind of going to be the breakout year. He was primed for a big season. And when you don't see live pitching, you know, and then you come back after five weeks of the season are gone, that's tough. Yeah, it's kind of get thrown in the deep end of the pool and just go, <laughs> yeah, I hope you have a, the ability to swing your way to the shallow end. And it, it is tough for a hitter to kind of get back in rhythm. This is a, this is a Murray State team that they'll run a little bit. Um, they are eight for 11 on the season so far. So pretty good success. Bland has not attempted a stolen base. Home plate umpire makes the call that he did not check his swing. One and two now. Two years ago, this racer squad was one of the nation's leaders, swiping over two bases per ball game. Not the same type of speed last year. And as you pointed out, so far this year, not one prone to running a ton. As Smith gets the strikeout, that's number five for the lefty. Two down here in the top of the third. That is such a tough pitch to lay off of. It, out of the hand again, it looks like it's going to be in the zone, and then it just knifes down. 
That is five inches of horizontal break on that slider. Check swing and that one gets passed. Well, that's a very important play right there because with bland speed, the ability to run on contact with two outs, you put anything in the outfield, most likely it's going to bring him into score. Yeah, that's going to be ruled as a, as a pass ball right there on Hudson White. That's a really good point, Josh. This, this, this is a, a way for Murray State to kind of chip away at that three-run lead. See Smith kind of really losing on that last pitch. Dustin Mercer couldn't find that one. Flight out to left his first time up. Arkansas just leaving Bland, the base runner at second base alone. Aloy's not even in the picture. And they're just kind of maintaining his position. Good block by Hudson White. No racers player has been hotter at the plate lately than Dustin Mercer. Nine of 15 in the last three games. I have to say he's going to see a slider right here. It's a really good job on a tough pitch. If you're Mercer right here, you've got to think up the middle the other way. I mean, if he busts you into the fastball, you just kind of have to tip your hat, but you've got to sit off speed and think that something's going to be on the outside third. Hagen Smith with strikeout number six and one stranded in score. And in a big stage, he was really the guy that you wanted the ball in his hand as he showed last year, Missouri Valley Conference Tournament facing a very good Missouri State team. Seven shutout innings in getting the win. Yeah, I really like his delivery. Very. It's a very easy 92, 93 miles an hour. Good tight slider, and again, he'll, he'll mix in the curve and the change up on occasion. There's the change right there. You'll see that more to left-handed batters trying to have that pitch run down and away. Really, it's a good take right there by Kendall Diggs, who's just an incredibly patient hitter. Chops this one towards first. Easy play for Taylor Howell. One down here in the bottom of the third. So for this veteran Murray State team, Troy, that you talked about, you look at all of the stuff they got back in the pitching rotation as well. Yeah, you, you just got to love having all three of your starters in that starting rotation back. Again, as, as a head coach and Coach Skirka, you, you just know what you're getting when you can roll those guys out there, you know you're they're going to be competitive day in, day out, and you're going to be in every ball game with that experience. So Jacob Pennington's name there. They'll kind of use him as a Swiss Army knife, the Tennessee transfer. He made the season debut on the mound last Friday, seven shutout innings against Louisiana Monroe. And if they use him this weekend, it'll be out of the bullpen. be all right-handers this weekend for the visitors. Bryce Valero tomorrow and Ryan Fender scheduled to start on Sunday. Spray Glott yanks this foul. So what do you do if you're Vernon right here? You, you, you threw a 92 mile an hour fastball, Spray Glott pulled it way foul into the pen. I think he, excuse me, into the seats. You've, you've got to try to come something off speed away right here. Yanks this just to the left of second. Bland is on it. Nice. Two down. Brings up Ben McLaughlin who walked his first time up. That's the only walk that Vernon has issued. 
It was just that one little stretch, Troy. He went one, two, three in the first, and then the first four batters of the second reached safely, and since then he's retired five straight. You know, and it, and it started with a walk by Ben McLaughlin, and that's just kind of one of those things. It seems like it always kind of snowballs with that leadoff walker, that free base runner. I like Vernon's thought process to try to get Arkansas to swing pitches outside the zone. So far, this Razorback lineup has laid off that pitch down in the zone. How about the ability to throw a 2-0 slider right there for a strike? Pitch just runs a little bit outside. Seems like that this racer defense is playing the any left-handed batter with the shift on where the shortstop is on the right side of second base. There you get a good look at it right there. Laughlin takes his second walk of the ball game. Boy, just below that strike zone. See, some guys just have a knack of just knowing that strike zone. That's what Ben McLaughlin does. You just feel like Aloy's going to get a hold of one pretty soon, and wouldn't surprise me if it's in this at bat right here. Hard hit and under the glove of Vogel. Well, he is crushing the baseball. His first hit was 99. That exit below 105. Yeah, he's got tremendous power. Built a lot like Jay, uh, Battles from last year and a couple years ago, excuse me, and it just seems like that about 6'2", goes about 200 pounds, and uh, yeah, he's got some juice, there's no doubt about it. Power to all fields. Little jam flared into left center. Hawthorne makes the catch. Arkansas gets two on base, but leaves him stranded. It's a three to one hog lead as we go to the fourth inning. Just so much production there, Troy. There really is. This is a racers team that's picked right now preseason third in the Missouri Valley. First pitch, this one turned on and lifted up into left off the bat of Jonathan Hogarth. Jones there to make the catch, and there's one away. Some pretty good hang time on that one. Hogarth just missed that one. You can see him right there going, ooh, hit it square, just got the bottom part of the baseball. I think there is a gate open in the racer's bullpen. Jason Jones is going to go over there and take care of it. Wasn't latched. You gotta do what you gotta do, yeah. right? <laughs> Man of many talents, Jason Jones. Jones trying to close the door on the left fielder discussion as well, and doing a pretty good job of it. So far, hit a couple of homers against Grambling on Tuesday and had a two RBI double in the second inning today. Appeal to first, yes he did. So Carson Garner, five homers in the first five games. He's been walked six times since then in just a three game span. Megan Smith going right at him with the first couple of pitches though. Garner that's, flat out to center first time up. That slider is really buckling Garner's knees. Everything he could do to hold up from swinging at that pitch. The appeal did not go. Very close. But Garner did a good job of holding up on a swing right there. See if that barrel crossed his own plate. That's a great job. I think he's seen five pitches so far, five sliders. 
All of a sudden, it's a full count. That's a pitch that, you, like you said, that Oregon State was swinging at down in Arlington, and Garner was able to lay off and get back in the hitter's count at 3-2. This time he comes right at him. Fastball at 95. That has been a point of emphasis that the umpires in the SEC are looking at is calling that strike at the top of the zone. And good job by Hudson White, but that is a strike. The strike zone is from the hollow of the knee, right below the knee to the midpoint of the chest. Hey, we were talking about the first meeting between these two back in 1986 when you said you played in that matchup. What was the strike zone at that time that you remember it? It was a flat rectangle. If it was at the belt, that was a high pitch. But you had about more like three or four inches below the knee and about two inches off the plate. So power pitchers loved it because they could really nibble on those corners. How about Hagen Smith loving this strike zone? Third consecutive, one, two, three. In the nation. Now nine dingers. Jason Jones, Arkansas's home run leader on the year, puts a charge into this one, but it dies off at the warning track. Really looked like, like that Jones got a little more of that baseball off the bat, but he just kind of hung up in that wind. You can see he was a little frustrated. It's a routine fly ball. Jones, the only Razorback that's homered twice this year. Here's Peyton Holt, drove in a run last time up, chops one foul here. Five pitches, 32 for strikes now for Vernon. That's Char Charles Savage down the first base line, said no swing by Peyton Holt. Kind of helps your cause when you just leave the bat at the angle that you stopped it at. Ground ball sees its way through. Not smoked off the bat, but hey, hit them where they ain't. Shortstop Vogel was kind of playing in the hole a little bit more closer to third base. Hulk gets jammed by that slider, but can just gets just enough of the barrel to get it squeaked through to the outfit. Gets past. Holt in scoring position now with one out. Peyton Holt's second stolen base in as many attempts this year. That was a really good jump by Peyton Holt. Not much of a delay by Vernon. Just a tremendous jump, and I like how if it's a straight steal, you don't look back as a base runner. You just put that head down and go. You can see that's a good job by Nate Thompson helping up Peyton Holt to say, hey, that one didn't roll away far enough to come to third base. Wilmsmeyer couldn't find that one. One and two now. Really big hole between first and second base by for Wilmsmeyer, but with two strikes, you're just trying to put bat on the ball in this situation right here. Wilmsmeyer in his second game as a Razorback this year, went three of five with a homer, five runs driven in, and robbed a home run. Have yourself a day. 
place in Tavian Josenberger, who was so good for the Hogs a year ago. Called strike three. Right on the outer edge. Yeah, picture perfect strike right there by Cade Vernon. You can't throw the slider any better. That, you talk about dotting the strike zone right on the outside corner. Love how Chris and the catcher really stuck that pitch. You know, you see a catcher grab it and not move. They know it's a strike. They don't try to over frame that pitch and try to pull it in the strike zone when it's already in the zone. Back to the top of the order in Hudson White. This gets away and down to third goes Peyton Holt. A guy that's usually in control of his stuff. That's only his eighth career wild pitch in 168 innings. Wow. That's really impressive. Slides that in for a strike. But what it does do is it, it takes away the, the opportunity to try to bury this slider or curveball down in the dirt. You just don't want to spike one and have that runner come in and get a free run for Arkansas. Wow, that was an outstanding job by Crisen. Head coach Dan Skirka couldn't say enough good things about his catcher, the redshirt senior from Northport, Florida. He said, I don't know how many times opposing coaches came up to me last year after we played them when I'd run into him on the recruiting trail or whatnot saying, man, that catcher of yours is something. Talking about Ethan Kreisen. They felt lucky to get him. A guy out of Florida went to Tallahassee Community College. See why the pitchers love throwing to him. This ball is a high towering shot to left center, but playable. Hawthorne makes the catch. Arkansas leaves a runner on third. Coming off that 17 strikeout performance against Oregon State down at Globe Life Field in Arlington. Six, seven, eight to bat for Murray State. Taylor Howell takes a first pitch strike. Took a little something off of that slider. He normally throws a slider about 85. That was about 81, 82. It was impressive, yet not surprising at all to see how well the Hog fans traveled down to support the Razorbacks there in the state of Texas. Yeah, there's a lot of alumni in that DFW area. And they came out in full force. I have some former teammates back in the day that lived down the area that went to the ball game, and they said it was kind of like Bomb Walker South down there. Howell sat down. That heater ran up and in, and he just had no place to go with it. That is just such a tough pitch. This is actually a strike. It's on the inside corner at the highest part of the strike zone, but you might get that call if you're Hagen Smith. So if you're Taylor Howell, you've, you've got to swing at that pitch. And, and unless you're just sitting on it, you got to get that barrel out in front, you're, there's really no way you can hit that pitch. Three strikeouts in a row and five of the last six for the lefty, who's now got nine today. It is 61 pitches. Reagan Smith, how about 41 strikes, 20 missing the zone. And the velocity is still there, Josh. 95. First Razor back to make opening day start since Blaine Knight did it back in 17-18.
There's a lot of people down the Razorback bullpen sitting on their hands right now. They're just they're just here for the show for Hagen Smith. There's the double digit strikeout number. Pitch count still pretty low as well. We'll take that. Yeah, again, out of the hand, it looks like a strike. How about six inches of horizontal break right there? That was a really good look at Hagen Smith, how he really spreads that glove out. And you can see him just spinning that, that ball in his fingers in the pocket of that glove, so you really don't know what the grip's going to be. In those six innings against Oregon State, 78 pitches, 59 for strikes. Probably could have easily gone deeper in the ball game, but really no reason to try to stretch it early on, especially since he only threw 42 in the season opener. Hey, you're just kind of building for conference play in a couple weekends. And he has looked everything of the All-American that he is. Even though that's a ball, you see Hudson White saying that's right where I wanted it. Good take right there by Kreisen. And for a strike, that's, what, that's what's so tough. You know, as a hitter, Kreisen's like, okay, I, I took the borderline pitch. I'm 3 1. I'm in a hitter's count. I'm going to get a fastball. I got to gear up for it. Oh, it, it hits a slider. Got him swinging. Smith strikes out the side for the second time today. Rampant today. Scratchy throat. Got to pick up the kids from school. Instead, just head straight to the ballpark. It's been a good outing so far for the right-hander, Cade Vernon, though, and just really what we expected. He's got his team right now in contention, which is all you can ask for. That's the pitch that Arkansas has laid off of Vernon. It's the, it's the pitch down in the zone, no matter if it's a slider or a fastball. Chopper to first. Really nice job, like you said, for, for Cade Vernon. In this situation, if you're Dan Skirk and the head coach of the Racers, you, you just want to be in this ball game. And, you know, he, he really bounced back and did a good job giving up only three runs in that second inning. It could have been a huge number, a six or a seven. And again, that's the veteran. He didn't panic. He tried to kind of get his outs when he could. Got away with minimal damage. And again, he, he's just he's just pitching with a lot of character out on the mound right now. Sprague lot hard hit to short, but fielded cleanly by Vogel. What a pick at first. Taylor Howell. I think uh, Vogel's going to have to buy Taylor Howell a snack of his choice after the game. That's like worth some big league two or something like that. What's your favorite bubble gum or whatever? This is it's a ball that scorched off the bat 93, but. I don't know if Al really had the best technique, kind of that head kind of turned a little <laughs> bit, kind of, hey, mom, look what I found, but hey, it, it, it worked. Those longer hops are the hard ones. You know, it's, it's the short hop that's easier. You go out and try to get that one. The top three in the Razorbacks lineup, 0 for 9 today. Yeah, those are the little things that, that don't show up in the box score is, is that your first baseman being able to save an air. It saved a handful of pitches for the, for the pitcher. You don't have a runner at first. I mean, it just completely changes the complexion of the inning. Now you have nobody on two outs instead of a runner that really could be at second base right now if that ball goes in the dugout. Ben McLaughlin, who was one of the best two out hitters on the team a year ago at 333. Fouls this back. He's drawn a pair of walks today. The only free passes issued by Vernon.
with McLaughlin, I think the reason why he's so successful as a hitter, it's just it's just the barrel stays in the hitting zone for a long period of time. This one dribbled to the right side. Logan Bland, routine play. Razorbacks retired in order in the fifth. Second one, two, three inning for Verdon. Three to one Razorbacks. Pitchers in the league. Here's a bunt laid down by Logan Bland to start. A flip from the glove, not in time. Well, that was an area of focus for Arkansas, is be aware of the bunt, especially from a guy like Bland who handles the bat well and has good wheels. That was just a perfect bunt by Bland right up the first baseline. I think that's the only play that Hagen Smith can, can make right there is just try to try to flip it with the glove. The only other thing, I don't think there was any chance of that ball rolling foul. So you've either got a, it's a do or die type play. I think Smith wanted some redemption because there was a bunt laid down in the Oregon State game. Yeah, I think Bland just beat it. You see McLaughlin, he's giving Smith a nice target to throw to, but he's also not stretching toward the baseball. Boy, I think, I, man, I'm gonna change my call. I think he's out. What do you have, Josh? Yeah, I think so. That didn't take long. No. I think. No, but Smith had a play like that in the Oregon State game last weekend where it was a quick bunt laid down to start an inning, and he got there in time, but he barehanded it, and the throw was a little high, and this time he just flips straight the from call the first glove. The has been overturned to out. There you go. Call overturned. So here's an interesting stat that uh, this is going to bring out Matt Hobbs going to talk to, to Hagen Smith just really quickly right here. Maybe just make sure he stays focused after that. Maybe just say, hey, you didn't pull anything or anything like that on there. You didn't hurt yourself, did you? It's like, okay. But uh, over almost 80% of the calls in the SEC a season ago were upheld. 80%. You're talking about like that play right there. It's a bang, bang play. You know, millimeters, you know, the difference between the foot being on the base or not, that's pretty impressive how good these umpires are, you know, day in, day out on those, you know, bang, bang calls that can go either way. For sure. Now you wouldn't have expected, I don't think, the number to be that high. You kind of just maybe look at it and say if the majority of those bang, bang plays are, you know, you get those right, then it's all you can ask for. Back to the top of the lineup. This is the man that's got the only damage to Hagen Smith's line today, Drew Vogel. Third year starting shortstop. Vogel thinks he's going to get something off speed. He sees 96. 96 in the sixth. That's, that's something the scouts love to see, that ability. Appeal to first, said he did go. Vogel didn't like that call by umpire, first base umpire Charles Savage. Let's see if that swing was checked. I think he's got a pretty good argument right there. So two down now, Dustin Mercer. Mercer 0 for 2 today, flight out in the first. Smith struck him out in the third. I don't think we have to worry about the pitch clock with Hagen Smith on the mound. No. Talking about a guy who just gets the baseball and goes. That is one thing that's, that's hard for hitters to kind of slow a pitcher down because they really can't step out of the box and you know take a couple practice swings.
everything's a strike to the fans here at Baum Walker. <laughs> <laughs> Even pitches three or four inches off the plate. They've got Hagen Smith back. 2-2. Two -two. To short. Aloy fires across. Side retired. 1-2-3 for Hagen Smith and Arkansas still in front. 3-1. the Hoosiers take your pick on which one to watch and those are some great ball games and that's what you gotta love about some of those tournaments early on in the season now the Hiva Aloy Troy you said you expected him to get going today he's hit the ball extremely hard he's got a couple of hits I think he was just trying to overdo it a little too much early on in the season really pulling off of a lot of breaking balls. That's the pitch that's been giving him a little bit of fits is swinging at that pitch well outside the zone. Mahiva's brother, Kuhio, a freshman at BYU, homered in his first two collegiate games this year. Bahiva, consensus freshman All-American last year for Sacramento State at 376. Pops this up to right. Hogart makes the catch. Now batting for the Ranger backs, number 16, Hudson Hulk. Hey, Vernon's retired six in a row. He's looked really good, again, throwing up a lot of zeros on that board except for the three spot in that second inning. If you're Arkansas, you, you really want to try to get to that racer bullpen. Seems like Vernon is really working Hudson Polk on that outside corner. Longest outing Vernon had last year in terms of innings was seven in the conference tournament. And he struck out a career high eight. See if he doesn't stay away from Hudson Polk. Yeah, there's been nothing on the inner third for the DH for the Hogs. Two two now to Hudson Polk. Got him swinging. Second strikeout for Vernon this afternoon. That was just a really great job by Vernon. Just continued to pound the outside corner and was able to get Polk with that breaking ball down and away. The pitch was still a strike. I mean, it was a perfect location. That's one of those ones as a hitter, sometimes you just have to tip your hat and go, can't hit that one. Jones with a difference-making swing in this ball game, a two RBI double back in the second inning. Flight out to the track in the fourth to lead things off. Vernon's not a guy who gives up the long ball, though. No home runs allowed this season. And only gave up six all of last year in 77 innings. I think that's something as a pitcher. You just have to have a short memory. You, know, you just, just forget about the one pitch with, with bases loaded. He left that up in, the, up in the zone. Jones put a good swing on it. Only, only giving up five hits through five and two-thirds innings. I'd go right back to that slider again if I'm Vernon. Maybe just a little bit more off the plate. That was off the plate, but it was up. And you got a guy with long arms like Jones 
Even if you're a few inches off the plate, you better be careful. I think you want to bury this one down in the dirt a little bit more. Got him swinging. Back-to-back -back strikeouts to end the sixth inning. Vernon getting better with time. Arkansas still holding a narrow lead, though. Three to one, we go to the seventh. Home run off at Hagen Smith. One swing, one run. That's it. That's all the racers have been able to scratch out to this point. They're going to bring in, Arkansas is bringing in the senior, Cody Frank. Frank went down with a really unusual injury a season ago, tore his lat muscle, and uh, he is back. And that's, that's a big piece of the bullpen that Arkansas really could have used. That experience, he's a fastball slider guy, really throws a lot of strikes. Couple of saves already this year in four appearances for Frank, who's got a 150 ERA. Six innings, eight strikeouts, only one walk. An opponent's hitting an abysmal 130 against him. From little bitty Tushka, Oklahoma. The thriving metropolis. <laughs> I want to give you give, give me a guess on how many people you think live in Tushka, Oklahoma. Less than a thousand. About 312. Wow. Got a pretty good one right here in Cody Frank. Frank makes his living on that slider, almost kind of like a Frisbee. Has a lot of horizontal movement. How about 10 inches of break? Wow. Brings up Carson Garner. So Hagen Smith, 12 strikeouts, only one walk, 81 pitches, 54 for strikes. He's slipping. He's slipping <laughs> off, of the, off of the 17. Uh, uh, average performance for Hagen Smith today. You know you're doing all right when you strike out 12 and say that was five fewer than my previous outing. <laughs> Called strike three, that ball. There's that break you were talking about. About 11 inches of horizontal break. That, that pitch started in Carson Garner's back pocket. It looks like it's going to hit him. You see him, it really locks him up. That's a really good job of Hudson White sticking that, that pitch right there, but easily into the strike zone, right even over the heart of the plate. That's one of those pitches that, you know, you hear people say, well, well, the baseball really doesn't break. You know, it's an optical illusion. Yeah, when it's going <laughs> to, feels like it's going to hit you and then ends up in the strike zone. I don't think so. That's the first ball that Frank has thrown. Murray State was happy to see Hagen Smith leave, and then Cody Frank comes in and strikes out the first two. Got him. That's why you wear the elbow guard right there. Frank trying to come up and in, and Riley Hawthorne just got a piece of that elbow guard. You could you could hear the sound of it, kind of the a click and you can see Morris Hodges put those arms up and say yep it got him Josh you think about it right here one swing in the bat this game's tied that's that's the job that Kate Vernon has done for the racers again as your starting pitcher, you just got to give your team a chance to win. Howell is swinging a miss. Now Howell's a guy that can do it. He's homered once this year. Three extra base hits. That's an early sample size, but Howell's hitting 200 with runners, well, excuse me, with two outs. Hagen Smith struck out all but one of the racers hitters at least once. The only man that didn't strike out was the bottom of the order, Logan Bland. Arkansas playing how straight, straight away in the outfield. Peyton Holt kind of swung behind second base just a bit. Fred
Frank with a solid fastball. It upper 80s, sit around 90. But it's that slider that he'll lean on. Wouldn't be surprised if he didn't go to it right here. Frank in his sixth year of college, played his first two years at Eastern Oklahoma State, then a couple of years at Nebraska. Now in his second year with the Razorbacks. Got him swinging. Cody Frank picking up right where Hagen Smith left off. The offense hasn't been what Arkansas is used to today as well. Cade Vernon maybe pitching the game of his life. And as good as his career has been, this is his 29th start. His career high, seven innings pitched in one game. That's only happened once in his career. And here he is into the seventh today. And the first batter. Sat down, Peyton Holt on a 5-3. What's well, Vernon's ability to throw the slider on that outer third? I mean, you, you can you can get a lot of guys out. You know, it would, you have to try to shoot that ball into right field if you're right-handed batter. It's so hard to do it. You try to pull it, that's exactly what you do. You ground ball out to that left side. Wouldn't be surprised if Wilmsmeyer doesn't try to bunt for a hit right here. Talking about his speed earlier. Baseball America lists him as the best base runner and defensive outfielder in the SEC. To short. Fogel able to get him by a half step. I'll tell you what, Cade Vernon, he just kind of has it in cruise control. He is just picking him up and putting him down. It's 95 pitches. You see some really nice numbers. Again, that, that second inning started with a walk by Ben McLaughlin, a base hit by Vahiva Loy. Hudson Polk had a base hit, kind of a swing bunt, not, not a real true hit. The only hard hit always give up is, is a line drive to right field to Jason Jones. He's retired 10 in a row. Hudson White, first year transfer from Texas Tech, homered in his Arkansas debut. And he's all over the 2024 draft prospects list. Former Big 12 freshman of the year. The thing I've liked about Hudson White, even though he's kind of been scuffling as of late, he, he's really not expanded that strike zone. He's really been pretty disciplined. That's that's a hard thing to do when, you, when you're not collecting a lot of hits. You want to get overly aggressive at the plate, and you can tell that's what a veteran does. You're able to just kind of play within yourself, let the game come to you. This ball is hit well to left center, turning and facing at the track, making the catch Hawthorne. Pretty good charge put into it. But it's another one, two, three inning for Cade Vernon and company. Dan Talk. Skirka trying to go to the righty lefty matchup, going with talking. You talk about a big frame kid, 6'3, 215. He started the season off on a right note, drove it eight runs in their three game sweep of Purdue Fort Wayne to open the year. This ball's got a tail on it, headed towards the gap, and it'll get down. All the way to the fence. Talking cruising into second with a leadoff double. That's a really nice swing by Talking. Nice move by Coach Skirka. Trying to go with the odds and percentages. And that is a changeup that Cody Frank left out right out over the plate. You want to try to throw that one down and away to lefties. Even with Wilmsmeyer's speed, no chance for him to cut that ball off. And Again, you're talking about this is a 3-1 ball game. That's no outs runner on second base. First pitch strike to Ethan Kreisen.
Arkansas does have a right hander warming up in the bullpen. I believe that might be Gabe Gackle down there. Look out. That is un Cody Frank like to lose command of a pitch that far up and in. See, really trying to turn over that fastball, and it, it just sailed on him. If you're Murray State, you, you bunt right here, you try to you got a guy with tremendous speed. You better be ready if you're Jared Sprague lot. Frank had not hit a batter all year long in his four appearances covering six innings, but has hit two now today. Throw's going to come to third and getting the foot on the bag. Nice adjustment by Jared Sprague Lott. He was fishing for that bag. He was, I think he stomped on it about two or three times just to make sure. Well, you talk about a ball that just dies right in front of home plate. I love the, the play and the thought process by Hudson White. And we will see a call to the pin. Five arm, he'll sit in that low to mid 90s with the fastball. I think he's hit up to 96. And uh, you know, really tight breaking ball. The thing that impresses me, Josh, about Gabe Gackle is, and you don't see this uh, uh, out of a lot of freshmen, but just one word, poise. He just kind of has poise. He just kind of stays very calm in the moment. Facing the top of the order here with two aboard and one out. Sending started with a double by Dan Talkin. Ethan Kreisen hit by a pitch. Logan Bland trying to get a bunt down. Hudson White able to go down to third base to cut down the lead runner. And so it's back to the top of the order in Vogel. Career 270 hitter, but hitting 375 through the first eight games this year. There's a quick throw back down to First, and Arkansas really catches a break there as it hit Bland sliding back into the bag. Ground ball. Let's go back to the first inning and Drew Vogel, second pitch of the ball game. Yeah, just a ball that just crushed. See it hit on the very top of that player development center in uh, right field. And Again, he, he's a guy that can put the racers in the lead right here with one swing at the bat. Ball dips down in for a strike. I think Hudson White makes a good throw right there. They've got Bland off of first base, and you're right. McLaughlin doesn't even put leather on the ball. He It, it hit nothing but the runner, and that that's a, a game changer on how this inning could look if that ball gets scoots down the right field line. It's a great job by Vogel to foul off that pitch. That's a really tough overhand curve. Two, two. And Homer for Vogel is second of the year. He's hit seven each the last two seasons. Boy, Drew Vogel has been on a lot of pitches right there. That is 95 at the knees. And you got a veteran, a veteran hitter that's not going to expand that strike zone very much either. So Drew Dacko, you got to Make it a competitive pitch. Got just enough of that one to where it didn't find the mid of white.
it seems like the more a hitter, the more pitches a hitter sees, it feels like it's advantage hitter in this situation. Well off the plate. Boy, do you start the runners right here? I, I don't think you can. You don't want to run yourself out of a big inning. Payoff. Thank goodness for the net. I think that was going to get me up here in the booth. <laughs> it was right at me. Again, great swing after great swing by Drew Vogel. And, and credit to Gabe Dak for going right at it. Got him swinging. Well, he put up a valiant fight. But Gackle able to win that battle for out number two. It, it, it all came for Gabe Gackle to throw strike after strike. This one's off the plate. But again, every pitch was in the zone up to that point. So Drew Vogel kind of had that swing happy mentality. And he knew he had to protect. Two away, Dustin Mercer. The two captains at the top of the lineup, Mercer. It's been held quiet today, 0 for 3. Coming off a Tuesday win over North Alabama, in which he went 4 of 5 with a double and a homer. Five extra base hits in the last four games for Mercer, having a great year. That's just power versus power right there. I think that caught a little too much of the plate. Hudson White set up about six, eight inches off the plate. He's going to go have a, oh, I thought he was going to have a conversation with his freshman saying, hey, son, this guy's too good to throw one over the plate, 2 See, he's almost going to bury one or just go away in the zone. Called strike three. Gackle comes out. He had 23 appearances for the Racers. Four and one record. Throws from that lower arm slot. His slider is hard to handle. Much like the lefty starter for Arkansas today, Hagan Smith. If you're Arkansas, you'd really want to get a safety run or two right here in the bottom of the eighth just to let you exhale just a bit. How big of a moment this must be for Thomas McNabb. Pitching in his home state. The big stage trying to keep it close. either want to play for the Hogs or play against them. That's probably a home, something a home state kid wants to do. Diggs smokes this back through. That's the first time that the top third of the Razorback order has been on base today. It's only the sixth hit scratched out by Arkansas. That's a breaking ball up in the zone. McNabb almost came up with that ball. Hit went right past his glove. 99 off the bat of Kendall Diggs. Here's Jared Sprague Lott. First pitch strike. Team leading 606 OBP for the senior transfer from Richmond. Reaching safely 11 times in the last three games. If he keeps producing the way he is, it's going to be a tough lineup card to draw up, tougher than it already is for Dave Van Horn because Peyton Stovall getting closer to coming back. And here's the throw behind him. And it hit Diggs. Look out, contact all around. The baseball hit him, and then he collides with Vogel. Hey, 
Yeah, McNabb had him dead to rights, picked him off, thinks what's going on first movement. It looked like it hit him in the helmet, ricocheted out into shallow left field, but then you're right, the, the collision by Vogel trying to come across and catch that baseball. Diggs is just trying to make sure his helmet's okay. Like, bit that guard. See if that doesn't hit him right in the head. Yeah, right in the back of the helmet. Ooh, a little bit of a collision right there. Boy, that's scary too, the spikes just going right past the head of Diggs. I'm just glad everybody's okay. What made that throw hard is, is that Howell was a right-handed first baseman, so your, your throw is naturally going to tail right where that runner is. That's why you like to have a left-handed first baseman. The angle is so much easier to throw that runner out from first to second base. This bounce through the right side. Stop sign given. No sense in chancing it there with nobody out in the inning. Well, Hogart was playing a really shallow right field. He charged that ball really hard. That's not hit, not scorched to the right-hand side, just kind of hit through that big old hole over there between first and second. But you see how quickly Hogart is on top of that baseball. And anytime the outfielder comes up with that baseball before that runner hits third base, that, you know, that third base coach is always going to throw up that stop sign. So it looks like that the racers are going to play in at the corners, trying to cut that run down at the plate, but playing double play depth up the middle. RBI chance for Benny Barrels coming up on the one-year anniversary of having that knee surgery a year ago. Hops this to first, stepping on the bag for one, and there's no play after. So, McLaughlin able to produce, and Arkansas ups the lead to 4-1. I almost think that Howe could have gone to home. I think he had a play on Diggs at the plate. In his mind, he was thinking about trying to get the runner at second base, but look how fast. Diggs is just now starting to run. I think a good throw gets Diggs at the plate. I think that's one of those plays you almost kind of have to think it through before it happens, say, if the ball hits me, what am I going to do with the baseball? And again, I think he could have had a chance even to freeze Diggs at third where he wouldn't have taken off. Malloy, first pitch to the right side. Two away as Sprague Lott gets down to third base. Ben McLaughlin, that was his ninth RBI of the year. Second on the team to only Jason Jones. Picked up nine and ten back in the second inning. Murray State will have the heart of their order due up in the ninth. For Thomas McNabb, the lefty, this year, making his third appearance, has not allowed a run. Three innings, just two hits, three strikeouts and a walk. Gets passed here and coming home. Sprague Lott for the second run of the inning. That was just a crazy play. Inside pitch deflects off of Kreisen, the catcher, and Boy, that was a that was a gift right there. That's a, that's a big run for Arkansas. That gives them a four-run lead. You feel like you could 
maybe scratch out three, but it seems like four is so many, so much harder to get. Well, how unlucky is that for McNabb? He made the pickoff move that would have gotten him the first out of the inning. This is outside, and Polk will take a walk. Yeah, you look at, you look at, uh, that's a good point right there. Kendall Dix gets thrown out at second base. It completely changes the complexion of this inning. Will Edmondson pinch running for Hudson Polk. Another small town Oklahoma product. Edmondson from Luther, Oklahoma. So we were talking about the hometown for Cody Frank, the first man out of the pen today for the Razorbacks out of Tushka. Lots of good small school baseball in the state of Oklahoma, just to the west. Edmondson having a good first year as a Razorback, transferring from Hutchinson Community College. Oh, Luther, Luther is a thriving metropolis compared to <laughs> Tushka. It's 12, 12 21. Four times, that's like that's, four times the size. That's the there big city. Go. Yeah. Tushka just southeast of Oklahoma City. How about Luther just northeast of Oklahoma City? I think if you're Jason Jones right here, you, you've got to think up the middle the other way. You're probably going to get something soft, that backdoor breaking ball. Three and one now. See if Jones gets something to hit. A double, hit one to the track earlier in this game as well. McNabb's got a good move over to first base because Edmondson was leaning back toward the back and he, he still didn't know if he was gonna come go home or go to first. Watch out, Jones might put a charge in one right here. Yanked foul, coming off the two home run performance on Tuesday against Grambling, including a fifth inning grand slam. One of two grand slams the Razorbacks hit on Tuesday night. And he'll take a walk. Brings up Peyton Holt, and he'll see a new pitcher. Murray State will make mid to upper 80s with that fastball. The thing about Elsing that makes him so tough against righties is that almost sidearm delivery. You talk about a, a low release point, got a really big sweeping breaking ball. He's not going to blow you away with, with the velocity, throw a slider and a changeup. What's called that Frisbee slider. But again, if, if you're Peyton Holder, right-handed hitter, and a, and a guy that's almost like a submarine or sidearm guy, you kind of have to think up the middle the other way because it's really easy to, to pull off of that breaking pitch. Making his fourth relief appearance of the year, has one save to his credit. Five and two-thirds innings has not allowed a run. Only two hits. He struck out 12 and walked just one. So it's been a great year so far for the 6'2 senior from Trenton, Illinois, Alex Elsing. 
I'm really surprised his strikeout numbers are that high. He seems like a guy that was like pitched to contact, get a lot of ground balls with kind of a really good sink on that fastball. Ball one to Peyton Holt. Last year, a 571 ERA for Elsing. Made 10 appearances in relief, covering 17 and a third. Only 15 strikeouts, so the strikeout number's way up. To your point this year, runners taken off. Throw will come to third. Everybody's safe. Nice pick by the third baseman, Garner. A little surprise right there. Arkansas ran with two outs, but DBH must have saw something. And the, the lack of holding that runner at second base and allowed Edmondson to get a really big lead. And if you're, you're the runner at first, you see the guy in front of you take off, you better go too. Front door breaking ball right there by Elsie. He had an opening day save that covered three and a third. Struck out seven and walked just one. That's in for a strike to even the count. Got those fingers on top of that pitch and that fastball was pretty true right there. It didn't have that dive like the other pitches do. Called strike three. Got the inside edge. Side retired, but Arkansas gets nine of the 40 punch outs in, in the last two Friday night starts. That's some big time numbers. That went a lot of swing and miss. First pitch here in the ninth from Gabe Gackle, who came on last inning with two on and one out, and he struck out both batters he faced. Facing the heart of the order here in the ninth, Jonathan Hogarth turned out of the way just in time. I think Hogarth kind of wishes he would have taken one for the team right there. Got that short arm release. He, he's already throwing hard. It's, he's, we've seen him at 96 last inning, 94 this inning. But that short arm swing, just that baseball comes out of his hand in a hurry and it gets on top of hitters even quicker than a guy that's got a, a big long arm swing. Outside and the count now full to Hogarth, who's a two time All American at Wabash Valley Community College. Perennially one of the best baseball JUCO programs in the country. And he'll take a walk here to start the ninth. It's going to bring up a couple guys up in the bullpen. Looks like left-hander Stone Hewlett warming up. Looks like right-hander Will McIntyre just started tossing. Arkansas is going to play behind the runner, Hogarth at first base. Third appearance of the year for Gabe Gackle. Five home runs on the year for Carson Garner. Gackle working the bottom part of the zone. Flinch, they'll appeal down to first, did not go. Garner, a guy, his 
bat has always been there. And so head coach Dan Skirka said, you know, he's always going to find his way into the lineup when you're putting together your roster of who you're going to go to try to win a series with. You know, his bat's going to keep him there. And he's done a good job, though, of adding defense at different positions. But he goes down swinging here. Just an outstanding block right there by Hudson White. That's a breaking ball that is well off the plate, buried into the dirt. And that's why, you, as a catcher, you don't try to use your glove right there. Just use the whole entire body, keep it in front. You know you've got that runner at first, so if you just knock it down, the batter's out. Grounded to first. They'll go to second for one. Relay back. Not in time. Good idea, though. Good throw from McLaughlin. Off the bat, I was wondering if McLaughlin was even going to try to get that lead runner. You see how far the base runner is off of first base. McLaughlin still fires the ball to Aloy. And this is one, as a coach, you're just hoping that Gabe Gackle doesn't get stepped on or hurt. You're like, uh-oh, we, we really don't need him hurt right now. That's a really good job by Riley Hawthorne, the runner going down the line of, of, of trying to avoid contact with a pitcher right there. Yeah, uh, three, six, one double play is nice, but a healthy Gabe Gackle is nicer. I like that, that Matt Hobbs is going out there first to check on him and going, hey, just, just don't get yourself stepped on out there. Matt Hobbs, who will celebrate his birthday tomorrow. Happy early birthday, Coach Hobbs. You know, they've got some antics planned for uh, him, oh I'm man. sure. You might see him show up to the park maybe about 30 <laughs> minutes later than he normally does. There's Taylor Howell standing in the way of an Arkansas win and Gabe Gackle's first career save in his third appearance. It was a save situation when he came into the game and so it stays as that save opportunity regardless of what the final score ends up being. And the runner moving from first to second, that's catcher's indifference. They just let him go to second base. It's not a stolen base. Arkansas fans off their seats and on their feet here in Baumwalker. Paint that outside edge. One, two. I think that ball is cued right off the end of the bat. Swing and a miss, and there was no contact off the bat. So Howell, heads up play, able to reach first on the drop third strike. This baseball just pops right out of the glove of Hudson White, just a breaking ball left up in the zone. No contact, it hits the top of Hudson White's glove, and. Shoots to the backstop, no chance for White to get the out at first. So, does go down as a strikeout for Gackle. But again, it's just a four run lead. Gunner Bingham pinch running at first base for Howell. Dan Tonkin came on in this seventh spot in the lineup last inning as the DH for Parker Estes. And gave the Racers their second hit of the ball game, a leadoff double that kind of gave them life. I'm really surprised at the runner at first. If, if Arkansas is going to give you second base, take it. Because a ground ball up the middle could be a force out at second base that you're not going to get the runner at first base. Make the defense throw the ball across the diamond. 
Runner taken off from first. They'll just let him go. Racers again down to their final strike. Two and two. Pitch. Got him. Swing in. Gabe Gackle puts an exclamation point on his first career save with his fifth strikeout. And Arkansas wins the opening game of this three-game set. Five